welcome back to the Couch Command, a journey through geekness. Um, we're, hey, yeah, we're going to be uh, doing a review of the newest Denis Villeneuve um, <laughs> movie, <laughs> Dune. Uh, with me today, I have prolific sci-fi writer. She did the Data on Trial episode of Star Trek, um, Melissa Snodgrass. Hi, Keith. I'm happy Woo! to be here. Yay. We've <laughs> back. All right, and also back with us is my sister from a mother, Mister yeah. Void Cat. I'm back. It's me. Woo! I then, asked to, to be on the Dune episode. I wanted <laughs> to talk about it. Right on. Then I also have my brother from other mother, <laughs> Max. <laughs> hey, good to be here. Cool. All right. So Super yeah, excited. um, to get things going, we're gonna sort of talk about like uh, one thing we've each been geeking on uh, recently. And then we're going to close up this recording, and then we'll start another recording when we do our review for Dune. So I will go first, if that's okay. How dare you? Mwahaha! <laughs> my podcast, my rules! What's up? That's what have right. you been watching? What have you been doing? Um, I have been... I, I went deep diving on the Chucky-verse, um, huh. if you guys oh, have been what? seeing. Uh, so, like, as a kid... Um, Child's Play was like the first scary movie that didn't scare me and just had me and my buddy in tears laughing. It was okay. like nothing we'd ever seen before. We had like that little doll guy and he's cursing his head off and, and doing silly kills. And like for the first time, it didn't make me like scared to go to bed. It just made us laugh. So mm-hmm. throughout time, I don't know, Chucky's always had this kind of like this, this mental rivalry in my head. Like, like I guess, like you know, I was a little boy at the time, and then Chuckle- Chucky's main rival was a boy named Andy, who you couldn't help but see yourself through. And then later, he gets his big sister, and I had a big sister. Uh, so anyway, throughout time, I, I, Chucky's always been kind of like this rival. And then, like, um, I've only seen like the first two movies. And then on a podcast, someone mentioned that they're going through all of them, and there's this word that it's done guy done by a guy named Don Mancini, and he's done all of every Chucky except for. The reboot, which was an AI stupid... Actually, I kind of liked it. But anyway, it was an AI <laughs> spinoff. Okay. But, AI um, Chucky? Yeah, oh. AI Chucky was, uh, okay. No, no. But, like, all the other Chuckies, like, um, unlike other st- scary movies where sometimes you can't tell if it's in the same continuity and, like, the tone changes and, you know, quality changes, mm-hmm. this kept on building on itself in ways where you're like, all right, does it remember the last movies? And then, like, usually by the end, there's, like, a surprise, oh, shit! And it's like, yes, every movie, you guys, we still remember the last one, and bomb-ass stingers. And then, like, while I was almost through all of them, I think there's, like, seven, and they're mm-hmm. really good, Um, in that, I found out there's a Chucky TV series coming. What? Yeah, and... <laughs> That's what I've been watching this week. <laughs> like, surprise. Oh, my gosh. Chucky's still here, and it's still the same story. And now he's tangling with, like, high school kids in the present wow. day. And it's it's actually really fucking good. I can't recommend doing the Chucky this run. This blows my enough. mind. Hmm? Like, I, I don't follow horror at all. Like, this blows my mind. that Because I remember Chucky as a kid, and... And like that, it's still going, but they're like keeping continuity. Like, yes, Chucky's like still. <laughs> that's oh, amazing. That's wild. That is, but also, still... it is November now. What, what, why didn't you tell me about this in October? I I think I only found out about the TV series <laughs> maybe a month ago. When like like my buddies were like watching me like you know um, post up on Instagram. They're mm-hmm. like Keith, just so you know, TV series. I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, and Pardon? the big sister, the big sister. And the and the main boy, the first boy from the very first movie, he does show up in the movies later, and he's coming back for the TV series. Like, as an adult, oh same character? Yes. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. He keeps on showing up through the movie theory series as a pretty fucked up and tortured guy who hates Chucky. And I can imagine. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. <laughs> and then, like, they get really beautifully meta, because, um, like, uh, Jennifer Tilly joins the cast at some point. And then they go Hollywood, and they have Jennifer Tilly playing herself, and then also her character shows up against real Jennifer Tilly, who then possesses what? real Jennifer Tilly. And then after that, every time she meets people, people go, "Did anybody tell you, you look exactly like Jennifer Tilly?" <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, guys, what? like I, I can't recommend 
doing the Chucky run enough. It's mm. so good. And it's been so much fun. That so. sounds pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, Void Cat, what you been geeking on lately? Um, you know, I haven't actually been geeking as hard as I, I, I normally would lately. I've been trying to rest. It's like a gentle geek back in the uh, work. Yeah, course. a gentle geek. So I've just been, a, yeah, because I'm a back at work. So I'm just doing like some uh, some yeah. soft like anime gliding. Um, I started Haikyuu, um, which is a volleyball anime. I have avoided mm. uh, sports anime for the majority of my life, but mm. um, Luke really likes Haikyuu, and he was like, "I bet you'd love the characters." So uh, yeah, I just started season one of that. Um, thus far, it's pretty like typical, you know. Like the main characters are like one guy who's really like optimistic, and he has a rivalry with this guy who's like super good at what he does, but not so great socially. And it, it it's pretty sweet thus far, though. Like it's really wholesome. I I like some team building stuff. Cool. I just saw the My Hero movie that came out. You know, same kind of thing. It's very like your typical shonen, but feels nice. Cool. The thing is about this new movie is that a lot of its animation and one of the the characters that's like not from the regular anime reminds me of Lupin the Third, yeah. like in the way he moves, oh, but in fun. the way that it's animated too. And it's such an old like animation reference for me. I felt really nice about it. And Luke, who got into anime recently, does not has never seen Lupin the Third, so I couldn't really talk to him about it. But it has some serious Lupin the Third vibes. I'm telling you. That's I was cool. very surprised. Some of the animation is like wildly like just not modern anime at all. Kind of flat. Like in a way that the character looks like flat in one dimension and then the world is moving in a different way. It's really cool. Huh. So I do right. recommend. That sounds like, awesome. Yeah. Does Watch the, that. Does the movie feel like it's a genuine continuation of what's been going on in the TV show? Well... I mean, not really, because, you know, the, the movies can't, they can't be canon, um, mm. but it, it's like, it's the place that they're at in the TV show, um, with, with like, they're all on, uh, like pro teams, oh, okay. um, so like it could exist in the canon, but it doesn't bring in any of the themes or the, the aside from like you know your usual shonen uh, teamwork is good. We we all have to believe in each other. Uh, greater greater will with triumph because you're saving your friends kind of stuff. All right. uh, sure, it's got all of that, but um, like you're not seeing any of the villains or anything. Um, like the last like anime saga that I was keeping track of, and I watched all the movies was Rama one half. So that that's a long time ago. I was kind of oh wondering like so had things good. changed wow. yet? Like had cha- it like uh, Rama one half when you saw one of their movies it's kind of like okay that really doesn't fit well. I loved it, but it doesn't fit. They're well. all like else world stories. Exactly. Um it, it it's definitely just like a side story. It's just like a a side story, you know. Cool. Nice. Um uh, Rama one half Rama one half had that thing where the same though where it was like kind of like it was all a continuation of itself but it was like all right so now we're gonna have this new girl who was also engaged to him okay she's gone <laughs> all right this other girl who was also engaged to him because of his dad right um okay akane is mad now uh, <laughs> all right she's gone uh, okay kasumi is doing s- some cleaning i don't know um let's take one oh, second to disrespect <laughs> one second to disrespect kuno yep mm-hmm. uh, uh mm. <laughs> Wow, Rama went half. That's a throwback. Yeah, yeah. I thought Lupin was the throwback. All right. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, me That's and Max cut our teeth. About. Yeah, yeah. We came to the conclusion that Rama's dad was the worst villain in anime. Sautome Rama. Just Yeah. Go to Genma. All right. Yeah, my brothers Wait. first wanted to cosplay uh, Lost Boy when he was young. Yeah, I, I um, went to a costume party as Ryoga Hibiki. There you go. Ryoga, yeah. Ryoga Hibiki. <laughs> yep. All right, that, that's all for me, though. Cool. All right. Melinda, what have you been geeking on lately? Um, Babylon 5. Um, nice. Oh, nice. And, uh, but apparently, occasionally screaming at the television, could you stop making speeches at me? <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty... I'm I'm a pretty terse writer. You know, my screenplays don't tend to be real talky. 
And everybody's going to go, mm-hmm. yeah, but you wrote Measure of a Man and there's all this courtroom stuff. That's different. Um, but in a normal show, I don't really get into that. So that mm-hmm. makes me a little bit crazy. But I really do love the characters, uh, especially Jacquard. Um Oh, yeah. And Lanier. Um, so, you know, I'm enjoying that. Um, I'm playing Pillars of Eternity video Ooh. game and getting oh. really annoyed because I can't make my wizard and my, my, my air, you know, archery girl not run into the fight. <laughs> it's like, will you stand? <laughs> oh, I hate when the NPCs, oh no, my God. So no, you know, and I'm like, I'm up here whacking on them with a sword. Let me do my thing. You stay back there and throw bolts and, and arrows at them, please. And no, they keep, so I'm, you know, getting frustrated with that. Mm-hmm. I think the last big, I haven't seen Eternals yet. I'm trying to figure out when I'm going to go. Um, I mean, the last film I saw, I went, I, I'm fun. a huge James Bond fan especially mm-hmm. Daniel Craig as Bond. And uh, so I, I had to go see the, the newest Bond and I loved it. So cool. oh, I thought it was, I thought it was a perfect, perfect, you know, conclusion, uh, especially after how awful the, the, the last, uh, you know, Smur Spectre movie was. Which I really hated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I really, really liked this one. So, um, yeah, so that's been, uh, and I'm, I should confess this, but I'm committing a little bit of Star Wars fan fiction just because <laughs> I needed to right yes, now because COVID is so depressing. So, um, yeah. Understandable. Is this your, that sounds super fun. Is this your first time through Babylon 5? Yes and no. I mean, I, I'd watched it in pieces, but it had been years. And so I sat down and just started watching it because it sort of, you know, one of these things that you want to have, you know, you ha- you need your geek mm-hmm. cred. I need to have right. <laughs> so I was like, okay, um, I'm going to watch it all. Yeah. Fun fact, um, Max Wellenstein hates Babylon 5 oh, and oh. disrespects our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> it's, every time I try and get into it, it feels like nerd homework, right? I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm like, you know, oh, actually, so I haven't painful. finished Babylon 5 either. Oh, Lord but I'm told mercy. if I can make it through the first season, I'll love it. So I... The first, the first season is 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 slow going. Um, I got to be honest, and you know, you kind of if you, you know, it, it's sort of like Person of Interest, which I think is the greatest television series ever. Mm-hmm. That was good, Person of Interest. Um, but you yeah. have to watch the first six episodes, and you have to say, okay, it's not really a procedural. It looks like a procedural. No, it's a giant science fiction show, um, and a brilliant one, all about AIs. Um, but yeah, that's mm-hmm. how Babylon five felt to me. I kept restarting and, you know, struggling. And then finally I sort of got through, you know, the early episodes and then, then I saw where the, what they were doing, but I really wish they would stop making quite so many speeches. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess like for me, Babylon five, uh, was my shit, but like, it was like, I, it, it, there's like entertainment things where I have to be in the right place in my life where I want that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And like, I think I was in like a sci-fi drought at that time. And they're just like, what else am I going to do? I, I'll hang out in the lobby of Babylon five and just like relax and not worry too <laughs> much. In the lobby. And, you know, just things to start to build up around you. Like, Oh, oh Hey, Jakar, aren't you a bad guy? Oh my God, you're cool. And yeah. So. <laughs> and, and he's a writer. So my, I, you know, right away I'm, I'm right with Jakar, right. you know, cause he's, you know, <laughs> he, he becomes he becomes the avatar for all of us <laughs> later on, uh-huh. writing the Constitution, you know, and everything. He's great, but uh, I digress. So anyway, that that's what I've been up to. Max, we've been geeking nice. on lately. Um, so I've got my my usual Tuesday night uh, RPG group that I've been playing with the guys for you know, like uh, some of them I've been gaming with since the nineties. <laughs> and nice. um, right, <laughs> so. So, uh, but I haven't been running for about, well, since the pandemic, because things have been just bananas. And um, so just this week, I started uh, started run- getting the game together to run again, and I'm, I'm pretty stoked about it. So, uh, Keith and Voidcat, you know I am a big Stargate fan, because mm-hmm. the two of you have made me so. Yes, so thank yes. you for that. And, yes, yes, <laughs> you're welcome, you're welcome. And so yeah, yeah, a, Void uh, has led both of us on thing on that. Yep, mm-hmm, and so there's a uh, um, there's a new Stargate RPG that came out this year, uh, thanks to a, a Kickstarter campaign that uh, that was wildly successful, and the the book is great. It um, 
It's a variation off of uh, Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition that does some nice things with the system that I like. I'm kind of a system geek. Uh, Keith will tell you I'm way too simulationist and get real tweaky with the rules. Thank um, God, because I don't pay attention to the rules whatsoever. So we yeah. need Max so, on on this team. So uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty excited. So I'm going to try it out with my um, my face to face RPG crew and see how it goes. Um, character creation has gone well, so. Oh, I'm so jealous. I'm doing. I'm it. playing yeah. in two role playing games, but on Zoom because the players were all over the country, and you know it's COVID, so we're all. It's harder on Zoom. Yeah, it I mean we're managing, and it's it's. I, I have you know wow. a giant collection of dice that I'm looking at right now. I keep buying more and more pretty dice. <laughs> Of course, of course, and so many, mm-hmm. so many more people are picking up resin dice now. So it's like there's so there many are some available options, and so many are so there. cool, and so many just yeah. make custom dice now. And they're like, I'll custom for your character. Yeah, I did this. Um, I did this Kickstarter for these LED dice, and I Ooh. still don't have mine. And I'm like, Come on, where are my dice? I want my glow in the dark do dice. The, LED. The balance. LED dice, and they have a little charger that you set them in and then they recharge and uh, oh my goodness but i don't have them yet i guess they're still tooling up their factory or something and i guess it's just taking longer and i'm like but i backed you and i gave you a bunch of money for my led light dice and i want my dice (laughs) (laughs) you jerks give me my dice my dice i need more dice of course yeah um i've been playing tabletop uh i've been streaming tabletop so i've gotten to play like on discord a couple times but mostly none of my like home games have been running so i've been getting really (laughs) antsy but um two maybe 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 three stargate maybe three to uh uh, two different groups that i'm friends with they're like i want to make let's start a game so i'm very excited for the future yes um let's see max the people who you're running the game with have they watched stargate Two of them have, three have not. So, um, so I've been sending them like, uh, yeah, I complain about nerd nerd homework, but I've been like sending <laughs> okay, them good. clips like, hey, check this out, check this out, um, and and so, they, you know, everybody loves Richard Dean Anderson, and you know, sure. I, I showed a couple of the first first couple intros to it. It kind of a couple of season comp- There's some really good fan combos out there that, that people have made like like Although- whole series trailers. To be honest, you can also just run the game with the people who already know being like uh, long-term members of a team and then the people who don't already know Stargate being like two fresh recruits to the, the Stargate program like, yep. and so far <laughs> it's it's still like nobody public is allowed to know about it so they just didn't know about it and then they get to find out through the game. I'm just saying. Yeah. Well, one of them wants to be so one of my one of my players wants to be an Unas scout, which is kind of fun. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Stargate, Unas are these, like, kind of imagined cave, like, like caveman stereotypes, except they're, like, these reptilian creatures who are from another planet. Um, so kind of like Gorns, I guess, for Star Trek. Yep, yep. But, um, <clears throat> There's so, so many Star Trek is, references in yeah, Stargate. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it is. Why can't we name it the Enterprise? Um, <laughs> But anyway, yeah, it's it's gonna be a lot of fun. So I'm pretty stoked. And are you are you adding any of your usual custom stuff to the game? Uh, I thought I'd learn the system first. Um, I am, of course, you know, throwing in my own custom ships, and and uh, I've got my my own. I'm throwing the the book plot right out the window, and I'm going with my own stuff. But oh yeah, good, good, um, good, good. <laughs> freaking nerd, nerd. Damn right, it's the way to live. Hell yeah, so cool. Yeah. Yeah, All so right. let's, let's get my creativity there. So I'm, I'm pretty pumped. Nice. All right. So, yeah, usually um, our geek section goes for like an hour and a half, which we were <laughs> been trying to stop doing that. But well, thankfully, we trick. got it. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Here's the trick. One thing each. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that, that does actually come in very handy. But it's hard to stop talking because I could tell you guys about now. We, we deliberately pick topics that we know more about. Than you this time? Mm. <laughs> Just kidding. I did not do that, but I could. That that would cut it down. So next time, there we go. All right. So then, yeah, like we can just freaking roll into. Let's dive in. All right. Let's roll um, right through. Yeah. Let's do the tune. All right. So, um, do, like, do, I guess like do, the best thing to do, do is like get people's background on Dune. Wait. And, hold like, on. Your, hold your, on. Your, yeah. 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 
Um, I suggest that we do a portion that is spoiler free first, and then we can like with our initial impressions and like yeah, okay. our basic ideas of how we feel about it, and and then go into spoiler territory for people who wanna maybe listen before they've seen it. I fully agree with this, but I'm gonna add one last first section though. The first section will be <laughs> each of our backgrounds on like our history okay, okay. with Dune. Yeah, sounds right good. On. So, um, Melinda, you go first. Like, so what? Where did you start with your Dune journey? Uh, Red Dune, uh, the book. You know, that was <laughs> the way you should. All right. Um, you know, old school. I um, I read the book and you know loved it. Um, I found the other ones to be you know less satisfying. Um, and you know, I don't know how much of a spoiler it is, but like when when he's no longer a dude. <laughs> It was like, okay, I'm done. Um, but the first <laughs> book I thought was fantastic. Um, and so, but it, but it's interesting looking back on it now from a sort of more modern sensibility, you know, where, where we talk about cultural appropriation and, you know, various issues that have come up. Mm-hmm. It, it does put it in a different light than when I mm-hmm. read this book. Um, and then, of course, there was the David Lynch Dune, uh, <laughs> which mm-hmm. was, you know, and it was one of those things where I, I watched it and I, the first thing that happened is I, when Kyle McLaughlin hit the screen, I said, this kid's going to be a huge star. I mean, mm-hmm. it was just mm-hmm. obvious. Um, Indeed. But I was, I was seeing it with my, my, my best friend, my dear friend, Victor Milan. And at one point we sort of looked at each other and said, why are the navigators shitting planets? <laughs> 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 Yeah. That was not how we pictured them doing the using the spice to traverse mm-hmm. through the galaxy. It was a little odd. There were some interesting takes in that. <laughs> and then, of course, there was the sci-fi version, which was you know pretty good. Um, but and now we have this new one, and wow, because <laughs> he's a brilliant director. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. All right, <laughs> we certainly have more ability to do some like very big scenes and special effects indeed void cat what's your journey through dune my journey through dune um i first saw my my first interaction with dune was the uh david lynch film uh which uh along with all of the sci-fi from my childhood i watched with my dad um yep. I I liked it because sandworms, you know, <laughs> sandworms What's are cool love, when right? I was a kid. And I was like, I, I was always obsessed with like weird eye things, you know, like eye damage is cool, but like blue eye, blue glowing eyes also cool. Mm-hmm. Um, So I just I was interested in Dune before I was capable of kind of understanding what Dune was about on a less literal level. And Dune is a, a fairly complex story to begin with. Um. I will credit it for part of the reason why, like, I was very good at understanding film structure early on. Mm. So you kind of have to be to figure out what's going on in a couple no of places. Kidding. I spent uh, most of my life not knowing what was going to happen in that movie, and I didn't yeah. film structure. I mean, like, again, it's not Lynch's like fault. He he made half of a movie, mm-hmm. and then they were like, okay, make the other two and a half movie in the the second half of this movie, and he tried to cram as much in as possible, and you can't. Which is why I feel like this new one ended where it needed to end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'll, I'll talk about that more later. Well that's that's where I'm coming from. I actually have not read the book yet, but in, in my usual nerd fashion good. of like through osmosis <laughs> learned more about the plot over the years. That's not in the movie. So like, I know about stuff, but I haven't <laughs> read it. Max, what's your journey? Through right. Dune? Um, yes. Yeah, uh, similarly, I, my dad, uh, sat me down with, well, Lynch's disavowed TV version, uh, the, mm-hmm. like three three hour long, <laughs> so like a VHS of it when I was like thirteen, and nice. uh, surprisingly, I just loved it. Um, I I thought it was confusing and awesome, and I guess thirteen is the right time to be like impressed with things that are that are like overwhelming and confusing. It's, it, mm-hmm. just, it hit me just right. Also, and, Sir Patrick um, Stewart. Oh yeah, and and I had um, I had just started watching Star Trek then, right? So, uh, or th- the Next Generation, and uh, yeah. Yeah, Patrick Stewart's in there, and um, it, you may have known, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, but yeah, so 
Lynch is doing is so weird, and there's so many choices in there that, like, later when I'm reading the book, I, I was like, why, where did this come from? <laughs> like, why did you make these choices? But, um, you know, battle pugs and, the, you know, the... But there's but that led to some some really, really memorable lines, and Keith, I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, but but uh, later on, I think in high school, I read read the book and didn't get it. And then in college, I read the book again and loved it. And then later read it again in my about 10 years after that. And just this summer, uh, as I was getting hyped for the movie, I, um, I went, went through on on Keith's recommendation, the, uh, the audio books for all six of Herbert's books and really love them. Um, the last two are, a quite a departure, but uh, I heard, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, they're pretty wild. Uh, Frank's got some; he's got some ideas, <laughs> yeah, but, but weird sex ideas or something like that. Yeah, yeah oh my gosh, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's. Uh, I don't know how he got that stuff published back in the back in the eighties, but <laughs> but um, uh, anyway. Oh yeah, and I I think I saw the I, I appreciated the solid effort on the sci fi. Uh, uh, the Sci-Fi Channel, um, but didn't you know wasn't really blown away too much. But it was it was nice to have, right? And then <laughs> yeah. um, and then Jodorowsky's Dune, I, oh, I saw blew my mind. I, I because of that, I assume the 1970s were just a river of drugs. And, uh, <laughs> 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 and that is I the haven't found anything to prove me wrong. Yeah, but yeah, that's me. All right. Um, my journey starts also in the 80s with um, Lynch's Dune. Uh, back then, me and my friends were just, like, doing everything we could to find our next hit of Star Wars. And, like, uh, we got to watch Dune, and we were very, very confused. But, uh, <laughs> oh, my God, it the the visuals on the screen uplift my heart and mind. Like, like there's something about that movie that really... And I, I hope, I wish more movies were able to do this. Like, Tramp supports me so hard to mm-hmm. a different world. And um, yeah. we used to play the childhood game of like, Walk Without Rhythm, <laughs> which nice. was like, you know, uh, if, if you're walking down the neighborhood and someone would just blurt out, Walk Without Rhythm, and you just start stumbling, and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, I wish we had video of that. That sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's walk adorable. Without rhythm. <laughs> walk <laughs> Without Rhythm. Anyway. Just a bunch of kids like, huh? <laughs> anyway, Walk Without Rhythm always makes me smile. Um, then, like, as a teen, I was binging on, like, fantasy and sci-fi books, and I uh, <laughs> I picked up the Dune book. It was like I smelled something really bad and threw it across the room. <laughs> like, yeah, like, um, it, it, that, that I really didn't get it back then. Because, uh, like, I just wanted to, hey, can I get, like, my hero some spaceships and some friends and do some adventures and it's like no key at all that, that's definitely not what this this part no is about, though. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so like i i was like i never got into that the sci-fi originals were uh an admirable effort in um then l- later in life i i was unemployed and had a lot of time to myself and I went on walks and put my earbuds in and like yeah the uh audiobooks like um i used to think audiobooks really was like up. cheating on reading <laughs> um but these like the way they compose them and put them together it's like a legit experience on its own like the voices they do and they do some production work and like i i really felt it i and then like um the thing i wasn't getting about doing as a kid was that like i think dune works really well as a podcast uh because like Ooh. there's so much about it that's like the thing that's like i i think that people found hard to turn into a movie is that the, it's like all of the cool philosophy talk in between the things mm-hmm. actually happening, which is what is like the meat of Dune that I like, where they just start talking about like humanity does this and that. And, and if you think about this and like you get like these big questions and like answers that you can start like just messing with in your mind, it felt it felt really good. And then the plot stuff happens in between and that's cool, too. But mm-hmm. to me, it's not as important as like the philosophy going on. And then, like, yeah, the books that Max get, got to, where it's, like, weird sex and plot, and I got to those, and that's when I was like, ah, uh, 
<laughs> I'll stop here. Plot. Thanks. That's okay. Yep. <laughs> I'm I'm I want to say I, I completed it. So I it's been like yeah. The, now it's been like almost like a year and a half of me trying to get through one of those books. Like I'm like ah, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that brings us to today and the Denis Villeneuve's Dune, which uh, we can talk about pretty soon. So, real quick, does anyone have a decent French pr- pronunciation ability? Like, mine is, yeah, I, I can actually, do German quite I, well, I but, actually speak but French. my French is Yeah, VC's miserable. an outlander. It's How do we say it? Villeneuve, thank Villeneuve. you. Villeneuve. Okay, thank you. Phew. <laughs> okay. <sighs> All right, so Thanks, knows. go ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. knows. I just feel better. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, no but yeah. Yeah, it, it it's been a it's been a hell of a journey. Like, um yeah, my favorite part was when uh you get to God into her Dune and it's pretty well known that his son turns into a worm god man and <laughs> Wow God, I love that so much. And uh, and that's when I quit. I'm just like, okay, <laughs> all right, I'm out. This I'm out. No. Yeah, no, he turns into a big worm, I'm done. <laughs> It's like, it, like you had the plot, you had the plot, but then you lost it. You went too far. <laughs> this was jumping the shark or the worm. This there, was yeah. jumping the worm in a big way. <laughs> uh yeah, yeah. Like I, I, yeah. Later the second, I, I, I can almost, I can almost, I can do impressions of him because he talks like this in the audiobooks, and that's how much I love. Later the second, he's oh gosh, a weird, funny guy. Anyway. <laughs> Um, there's, there's someone we, on Facebook. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go before ahead. we go into the depth of it, I just want to mention that uh, I I went to a Halloween party. Um, I, I I'm as shocked as you are, but uh, I went to a Halloween <laughs> party, and uh, um, this guy had made two sandworm props, and he literally whoa, whoa. Uh, got a circle of cardboard and screwed in some screws as the teeth, and then just wrapped it in a brown towel. Cool. And let me tell you, from far away, it worked pretty well. That's that's so, pretty excellent. Nice. If you want a five dollar sandworm, you got it. That's how. Just... <laughs> five dollar sandworm. <laughs> that's outstanding. All right, then we're gonna go around the table of doing non spoiler impressions of uh, Denis Villeneuve's uh, Dune. And first, we're gonna start with Voidcat. I really enjoyed it um let me state first that i saw it in imax so there were a couple of issues for me in regards to like uh wow. scenes with yeah yeah, yeah just it's very loud um and therefore i missed some of the dialogue i'm gonna rewatch it with uh subtitles uh. um but aside from that the sound editing was like really cool um there are a couple of moments where like the silence is just amazing or where mm-hmm. i'm thinking of a particular one you may remember um or not i'll mention it later on but um i really loved the sound editing the music was great i think everybody did a good job uh performance wise it was beautiful um it's very very obvious which planet you're on and like which uh family you're near I remember there was a jump cut where there was like a, a rubber glove, and I was like, "What is the? Oh, oh, okay. We, mm, I know where we are now." Uh, I really enjoyed it. My personal sentiment is that it uh, ended right where it needs to for like the multiple movies that it's going to be. But I understand some people felt that it was a little anticlimactic. Uh, I personally disagree, but so whatever. Uh, to each their own. There's something specific that I was thinking about. Oh, the design of the ships, you guys. Oh if you just gosh. if you just yeah. want to look at something that's cool and like not quite the sci-fi you're used to seeing, but like, yeah, beautiful. So go see good. this movie. That the helicopters, the, the, the dragon copters are, are my amazing. favorite. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god, I'm Those obsessed. Are some great so designs. I am obsessed with that. I want one. I want one. Why didn't we? Why didn't we design helicopters to look like that? Okay, since we're, we, we're you're, you're, it sounds like you're becoming a Dune geek, you have to call it a thopter. It's a thopter. <laughs> okay, okay, the thopter is great. Excellent <laughs> I, thopter, I, I agree. well designed. Um, a, a problem, quote unquote, with Dune is that it he he barely describes what anything looks like. He just says that these things exist, and then like your brain just goes wild. 
and I've been like trying to nail it down in my mind what an ornithopter looks like, and that's it. They they freaking nailed it. And yes, yeah, yes. that was. But like dude. even just like the the balloon things, uh, just, mm-hmm. all of the designs really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to laugh at the the um s- the uh, spice using a uh, transporter because it's just like. Hey, somebody played Mass Effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spice using which one? Uh the the like giant white round thing. Oh, oh, the like the, the space where they crack. like gotcha. Where they like they fly through it yep. and they yep. go yep. to the yep. new planet. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The uh highliners. <laughs> there you go. Cool. Yeah, everybody Nerd. else everybody else picked up yep. on the Mass Effect. Nice, nice. nice. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Yeah, yeah hi- the really highlighter well thing. Go ahead, Max. Oh, I like Voidcat. I I was just love the de- like the design of everything. Uh, it, it was so good and so perfectly iconic without being like over the top and obnoxious to mm-hmm. each house and like each each place. Like this is our feel. This is our aesthetic. And they're not, you know, it's not just like beating that drum too hard. It's just like this is. Perfect, and it's it just felt authentic for each place that we visited, and that authentic. like authenticity really like grabs at my heart, and uh, it just felt so good, and like nothing felt nothing felt crafted, it just felt right, and uh, you know from the sound to the costume design to the look and fe- feel of the the ships, and I am a big like spaceship nerd, and you know these fit the universe, they fit the houses. Uh, thematic, like when the, not a spoiler because you see it in the trailer, but like when the Atreides frigate comes up out of the water, um, oh my mm-hmm. gosh, that that just just grabbed me, and and so just visually they were so good, um, and such a great way to plant yeah. the fact that they really don't belong in a desert planet, just like right. in an instant, right? Yeah, um, so much. I just really appreciate the thought that went into making everything just fit fit the world like so world building upon the existing world building like just my hat is off to the whole team there that's Mm -hmm. so well done cool um vc uh do you have anything else to add go go see it go see it it's it's good (laughs) um overdrive uh which is his nickname because his first name is max and there's this movie called Maximum Overdrive in high school. I'd never seen Maximum Overdrive, but I knew that title and I see it in like video stores. So I started calling it Max Overdrive and that's where it's anyway, Max Overdrive. What do you think of the movie? Oh, that's where that comes from. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's really bad. I tried 90s, to watch yeah. it. It's no. horrible. Yeah. Even for me, I couldn't get through it. So But that's been my internet handle for It's no, such a good since it's like it's a great name. Forces the great internet name. now. Yeah. Yeah, before the yeah, before there was a webinets that I was on anyway. But anyway, yeah, I uh, as you can tell, I really enjoyed the movie. Um I I similarly thought it ended at the right spot. There were a number of plot elements that I liked in the book that were necessarily cut and I uh you know, on reflection, kind of like taking Tom Bombadil out of Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Taking a, you know, a certain plot around um uh the spy in the Atreides house uh Taking that out of the movie, I think, was the right choice. Um, I think it would have made the movie longer and lost lost the people who were new to new to Dune. Mm-hmm. Um, even though Great I really do, did like from that. Jessica, oh my though. gosh, they, yeah. they did cut out, but yeah, th- yeah you wouldn't need yeah. the movie. Yeah, so I think I think really thoughtful choices as to what they put in. Um, I was, I, I guess, I was not surprised by how much I liked the cast. Um, I didn't. I don't. Uh, I don't know Timothy Chalamet, Chalamet from from other stuff. I have I, I don't think I've seen most of the movies that he's been in, but he's he was really good as Paul. I thought mm-hmm. um, he doesn't quite seem fourteen. Like I know Paul, Paul's fourteen in the books, but he's close enough. And I'm you know a bad judge of anyone's age if they're yeah. under twenty five. Anyway, like, so. I, I believe he's a teenager. <laughs> I guess yeah, yeah. properly. Yeah. I, mean, sure. <laughs> I can see him having trouble learning to drive. Like it's <laughs> fine. So. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, everyone did a great job, um, really selling their, you know, their character's personality and nailed what I, what I had in my head from the books. Um, and then just 
Duncan Idaho. Uh, Jason Momoa, it like clearly was meant to play Duncan Idaho. Um, yes, uh, big you know, time. Like, it just feels like as you've seen him progress on on different shows and and, uh, and movies. You were like, heading right from is... Duncan from the beginning. We could tell. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah, this is his final evolution. I think. <laughs> final? I don't know. Wait, hold on. What well, we got? maybe Ronan. Well, that's right. We've then got... Conan. Then. Uh, uh, <laughs> Aquaman. What's his name well, somebody... in Game of Thrones? Khal Drogo. Thank you. Drogo, Thank you. Yeah. Then right Drogo. On. Then Aquaman. Then uh, Duncan Idaho. He's just got nowhere to go from here. I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> you, if we follow the books, then we get lots and lots more in Duncan Idaho's. So um, for thousands of years, he can keep doing this for, <laughs> for a while. <laughs> but my, someone, someone on Twitter, uh, Tess, uh, Tress, Trey's right stuff on Twitter. Had this great, great post about a week ago, was, uh, and I'll just read it. Uh, Jason Momoa rules because most of his roles are just like, what if there was a dude who is just fucking rad as hell, and he don't really <laughs> need range when he get do that better than anyone. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> Jason Momoa's role in every movie is I'm just just whoever. Hey, wants I'm to here. Be. I'm cool. I'm Everybody raddest. likes me. <laughs> yep. So I yeah. Anyway, cast great. Um, Stellan Stel- uh, Skarsgård as Harkonnen was just, just crushed it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, I could go into it, but I just everyone was and, and we will pretty impressive. Yeah, let's do it. Um, All right. Yeah. All right, Mel- Melinda. Um, she's next. Yeah. Okay. I I loved it. I have not seen it in a movie theater because I'm. COVID phobic, but, um, so I actually streamed it and I do want to go and see it in IMAX because the visuals were extraordinary and just the cuts. I mean, you know, Villeneuve is amazing in that he cuts from, and it's not obvious, but he'll use the sound of the water to carry you to Arrakis Mm -hmm. and the wind. And it was, you know, it was kind of stunning. Um, for me, the music, I, I was um, a music minor um, in college, and I studied opera in Vienna. And so music is sort of a big part of my life. So the Absolutely. music, to me, carried this thing. in. It, it added to that sense of haunt. I found this movie to be enormously haunting. Mm-hmm. Yes. Deeply, agree. deeply um, melancholy. Um and I love that. And I know some people have found that to be off-putting, but it's not a happy story and there's not a triumph. <laughs> really nice. I mean, you know, it is not a triumph. It is a... Right. Um, and so I think he set that tone just brilliantly and the cast did it did it beautifully as well. And, you know, they, they ended, agreed at the right point where he has taken a step from which there is no stepping back. You know, there's the mm-hmm. Paul has taken a step that is taking yeah. him ultimately to what he becomes, which is not so great. <laughs> you know, yep. absolutely trapped by probability. Yeah, and and so I think that was um, that was wonderful. I mean, my one disappointment, I wanted more of Jessica and the fact that yes, how much she has disobeyed the Bene Gesserits yeah, and, right. and, you know, broken what she was supposed to do and, and that she is not a wife. She is a concubine. Um, and I was a little bit sorry. I mean, I'm hoping because she does come to the fore in this second, in this next movie, she'll mm-hmm. have more to do. Yeah. I do feel like she got a bit of short shrift. Um, I mean, again, it was, you know, science fiction in the eighties, but, uh, women are, are, you know, thin upon the ground in Dune, (laughs) a lot of female characters, you know, so um, I just would like to have had a little bit more of of her um, and and her choices and what she does. Um, I think I loved um, Scars, I'm going to mispronounce his name, um, Baron Harkonnen. He was so not over the top, like in the Lynch film, he was, he was understated menace. Mm-hmm. in this very quiet way and that was to it, me so way more powerful it. yeah m- what's yeah. horrible horrifying ah. mm. yeah but without any of the histrionics just 
this sort of cold, implacable sense of evil. And yep. yeah. I thought that was just just wonderful. Um, no, I thought the cast was perfect, you know. It, but there is this sense of just impending doom, I mean, um, mm-hmm. all the way through yeah. it. That And the music, to me, was, was spectacular. It just underscored that. Um, specifically on the music, uh, so uh, it was either Denis or or Zimmer. They saw Star Wars and they're like, "Wow, I love this!" But hey, like if this is so far away, why are they using Earth music? Um, and for this specific movie, they wanted to make it so that it felt like it wasn't any kind of instruments or music from our time. So, oh, nice. Yeah, really. I, I think this yeah. is the best work Zimmer's ever done. Um, yes. in all of his, his filmography. I think this is the one yeah. that's just extraordinary. If it doesn't win an Academy Award, I will be, I will be upset, you mm-hmm. know, because it was, it was great. Yep. Um, so yeah, no, I really, I loved it. I really did. And, you know, anxiously awaiting the, the next installment. Yes. Um, but yeah, right. that's where I come down. <laughs> all right, Keith, all right. what do you got for us? First of all, did you like it? um, I, I, I liked it quite well. I, I wouldn't say I, I love it. Um, it's growing on me. Uh, I just want to get out of the way that... Um, so, I, I like Dune memes now. And <laughs> um, so, like, there's certain lines from, like, the movies and the books that, like, I'm, like, waiting for it. So, like, oh, yeah. when oh, Paul starts talking... Yeah, it was this way at the, just two parts where, like, uh, Paul starts saying, I'm not in the mood. And, like, <laughs> in the theater... I pointed at the screen because I was like, here it comes. Uh, <laughs> mood is for cattle and love play. And like, just stepped on that line. I didn't even try to say it. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. And I'm like waiting for them to remix it. And, and they just didn't do it at all. Aww. And I know that's small. And then like, and then like um, when they do the suits, you're supposed to say no. urine and feces are processed in thigh pads. I knew it. And, like, I knew that was going to be the second one. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> They and they just they completely like it was like Keith I don't have time I'm doing a movie now I'm not trying to do you're a serious I'm like, movie yeah. I get it okay you're no you're right you're right you're right I get it it's just like I just wanted the meme though yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you could have just given me one meme come on it's one line come on yeah hey. <laughs> here I am in the theater pointing at the screen like a dumbass and like it didn't happen so anyway those small things out of the way. Um, I did like it a lot. Uh, I liked, um, there's something I call boring science fiction, which is a compliment. It means that like, you get to just thick. Yeah. You get to just be there. It's not trying to dance for you or anything and, or be self-conscious about what it's trying to do. It, it just does it. And that I loved a lot. Um, when it comes to the thopters, I love that, but the highliner, um, and and their space travel, I wouldn't say I'm the biggest fan because I I want to see like the I want to see what warping looks like and I, I like some like some some stank on my spaceship designs, not uh, minimalism. I, I I hate minimalism. <laughs> um, it it's just like a an absence of stuff there to me. But um, I do think that's this is the way you should do it for your like they're finally trying to do Dune right. So you shouldn't try any kind of pizzazz on it. You just should do it just right. And later in life, if someone wants to do a remix, then you do that. But yeah, so um, I appreciate it. It's not what I want, but uh, good job. Um, Also, the other thing I have is like uh, what doing is, which is like to me, to me, it's like the Bible where like, you're, it's not. Oh man! It's a spoiler to find out that um, uh, Jesus gets put up on the cross. Or he just, what? Yeah, it's just like there's wait, like these, wait, it's wait, like, um, wait. Hold on, Jesus, what now? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. If, if you look at it, it's not. It's it's people have known this for a long time. So I think the yeah the time is passed. <laughs> Sorry, man. This is, this is what happens <laughs> to Jesus. Um, but like so, uh, I call it ha hu hi ya, which is like these uh. It's like this this training thing in Army of Darkness where you're doing these basic thrust, <laughs> basic swing, yes. basic swing, and that's what I'm seeing here. Like, there's like there's certain beats you hit in Dune, and that's what I'm seeing. Versus, 
uh, an adventure, which, like, once again, they shouldn't do, but I, I feel that missing when I'm watching this. Uh, well, I hope that, we get our Adventures of Duncan Idaho miniseries or something after this, because I think <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Want, I like, want to I do hope the TV some series exploration. Yeah. Just some Duncan right? shenanigans, you know, off, off yeah. on the side. Just uh, Play around yeah. in Dune. You know, because... But yeah, that's... Well, Dune is the story of Paul, mm-hmm. and then you you have Dune... Dune shenanigans on the side with with with, uh, with Duncan Idaho or whatever, and they could be a different, you know, a different kind of atmosphere because they don't they don't live I, like Paul. I would love, yeah, I want, yeah, yeah that that is or definitely like, what I want. I want like side story Dune. Let me Gertie see Alex what happens smuggling when you have fun, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sorry, I it, it can't be an adventure, right? It's right. an elegy. It's Fair it's enough. a it, mm-hmm. it's a tragedy. I mean, this Ooh. is not a yeah, this isn't yeah. a hooray we win and boy this is exciting. I mean, they mm-hmm. have their place. I think this is a, this is a little bit like a rival. I mean, this is what this director is drawn to. Oh, yeah. Yep. Is something very very bittersweet. Um I mean, Dune is a cautionary tale. Truly. It is not in fact a a a victory over you know triumph over tyranny yeah. all of those things it's none of that it's a cautionary tale and so perfectly said it's an elegy that was nailed it um yeah what i saw is like a visual poem playing out and uh yeah so as uh, as an elegy which uh, i'm gonna remember that one is beautiful and uh hypnotizing and immersive um it was like warm bath water of science fiction, and it calmed me. Uh, but yeah, it's just like little things that I like. That um, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just you like, were just I looking wish, for something different. That this I is wish bad. their armor was a little more pizzazzed, guys. Could you put some red on your armor a little bit, uh... please? But yeah, <laughs> so that is my take on it. It's really good. It's a great start. We need more boring sci-fi where you're not being crazy silly, but you're really trying to make this world. And, oh, and uh, another thing about Dune that I want to say is, like, uh, it, it took me many years until, like, in my adult years for someone to explain to me what old science fiction is, like, old technology science fiction is. Because for the longest time, mm-hmm. I couldn't tell right. why we're, they're acting futile and why everything looks so dirty and... It's just like, yeah, technology has become so old that it's just like unremarkable and they just cycled back to feudal times and I love that idea. So, yeah, I guess that's my take on Dune. Right on. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, I hope this starts more people making more movies like this and yes, um, yeah, um, add a little more color on them spaceships and costumes and uh, we get yourself uh, a stupid <laughs> one. Yeah, I do hope that the, the you know, the pretty good box office and and hbo max performance of of dune part one uh inspires a lot more of this this type of science fiction where it's not all you know action every you know every third third scene something blows up um i i enjoy that but you know if the science fiction that used to be serious science fiction or mm-hmm. boring science fiction or whatever you want to call it could could, could go back to to being yes. that and, and not be star wars don't get me wrong i love star wars but we have a lot of star wars right now we're about to get so much way more the obi-wan show i'm sure all of you ex- are excited about Super the show is coming out yeah. fantastic mm-hmm. lots of star wars so the other shows don't have to also be star wars thank you Exactly. I, I will say that this actually did kick off exactly what i want to happen which is Jordanowski's weirdness, and um, we're getting an in-call movie. If you guys have read the in-call yet, no. I haven't yet, but now I want to. I'm pretty, pretty keen on. I, uh, I've only out started more. it. It's like goofy, stupid Blade Runner. Um, is <laughs> oh. what I'm reading. Huh. And I hear it gets crazy metaphysical, weird, but like, uh, it's um, I like that. Yeah, it, it's Blade, it's Blade Runner. Runner right. Um, had a child with uh, Fifth Element, and okay. fun. Like they spun around really quickly and got really dizzy. You got the other call. <laughs> guys. I hate to do this, but um, I have to get up and ride a horse in the morning, and then I have to do an event 
about wild cards with George tomorrow evening, mm-hmm. and it's a lot going to be a long evening, <laughs> and no, I kind of can't. No stress. Yeah, I kind of can't keep going any longer. I need to sort of start calling it a no night problem. and get ready for Close tomorrow. Cool. So closing in on a, an hour. I think that's all right. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to slip away now. It was really fun. Thank you for including me. Um, well, here, here's what we're going to do. Like, I'm going to say, like, we're all going to stop the recordings right now, and then we'll continue once you're gone. Okay. Uh, with into spoilers. So, Melinda, thank okay. you so much for spending time with us. So good I to love talk geeking to you. with you. Thank you. It was really yes. fun. And until next time, guys. So, I'm going to shut down recording and drift away. And we'll see you guys on the other side with spoilers. My planet Arrakis is so beautiful when the sun is low. Rolling over the sands, you can see spice in the air. The outsiders ravage our lands in front of our eyes. Their cruelty to my people is all I've known. What's to become of our world? Boy! <laughs> Duncan, can I trust you with something? Yes, always, you know that. I've been having dreams about a girl on Arrakis. I don't know what it means. Dreams make good stories. But everything important happens when we're awake. Who are you? Put on some muscle? I did? No. We are a house of Trades. There is no call we do not answer. There is no faith that we betray. Smile, Gurney. I am smiling. The Emperor asks us to bring peace to Arrakis. House Atreides accepts! I know you. There's only a way for you in my mind. You need to face your fears. Come with me. Before. They're not human, they're brutal. The Duke's son sees too much. This is my dude. Kill them all. God in heaven. Get everything with guns off the ground! Go! This is an extermination. They're picking my family off one by one. Let's fight like demons. Dad, what if I'm not the future of House Atreides? A great man doesn't seek to lead. He's called to it. But if your answer is no, you'll still be the only thing I ever needed you to be. My son... If anything happens, will you protect Paul with my life? Only together can we stand a chance. everyone welcome back we're gonna talk in spoiler territory now uh keith i just want to say that y- you were like it's what what is the spoiler in this case um specific scenes i would say and like exactly where it ends that's the okay. bit that i didn't want to okay. say in the first half all right um melinda had to go because she leads a much busier life than we do <laughs> Yeah, she's got to hang out with George R. R. Martin. Oh, my so. God. And go horseback riding. That, that's like, not what she's doing. That's not yeah. a bad life. Th- that is what she's doing. Okay. No, no, no. But... She said she's also doing like some kind of yeah. convention thing with George. Oh, okay. Yep. I... That is the George. Yeah, that's what she means by George. My brain tuned out, I guess. It's fine. Mm. Uh, I, I was just thinking about horses. Uh, that's, that's what happened there. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> so before I let anybody else talk, I'm just going to monopolize for a little bit. Um, I've heard many a friend of mine who's not very invested in Dune or who didn't know the story already. Their opinion is that the movie should have ended when the House of Atreides fell. Hmm. And they, it's um, nice they have that wrong opinion. They their opinion is wrong, and let me tell you why. Um, friends who have this opinion, don't worry, uh, you'll be convinced at the end of this. Because uh, now I'm I'm actually kind of now on that side at this very moment. Don't like, worry, hey, don't worry. Let climax. me convince you. Okay, so two all right, things. All right. Um, first of all, this is an overall story. Uh, overall, it's the story of Paul Atreides and um. Act one is the death of Paul Atreides, and act two is mm. the, the rise of Muad'Dib. So right, they, they ended right. at the death of Atreides, of Paul no, Atreides, right. rather than the house itself. Yeah. Two, no, no, you're right. You're right. Um, thank you. Uh, uh, two, if he had had all those hallucinations about Zendaya and then also the guy that he kills, um, but we had never seen Zendaya or the guy Janice, that he kills by yeah. the end of the movie, people would have been very upset. So... Yeah, you're right. You need to have those in. Yeah, that's a, that's a good call. Because I, I was thinking, like, the idea of like um, ending it with the the fall of the Atreides, it reframes it into more of a robust story about the Atreides family, and then you get more Jessica and like the all out loss of like you know their home. That that does kind of make for very, and like you, you could have maybe built out the final battle. Uh, it could have been a great climax versus the one-on-one, but then we are taking away from the story of Paul, which does make a better samurai swing of the point that this director is trying to make. Right, especially since the Dune Two is going to be about like us learning uh, all about like the Fremen culture, which this is the the bit that David Lynch got fucked over with, and then he had to like just shove really fast in there, and then like all of a sudden. He's, you know, worm guy. Um, I'm right, very yeah. excited that we're finally going to get to see that, like, more spread out with with the, the you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, again, I'm, like, trying not to spoil the series whilst spoiling the movie, but then, like, it's from the 60s. Okay. Right. We'll find out some cool things about the Fremen, and I'm excited about spending more time with that and with the shenanigans that are going on with his mom and his sister. Okay, that's yeah. Oh yeah, Aaliyah. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. Aaliyah of the knife. Yeah, that's <laughs> crazy really ass cool. Aaliyah. That's gonna be fun. Okay, so that that that's what I wanted to say, but also because if they had cut out at that earlier bit, it would have skipped my emotionally my favorite scene, and this is gonna sound ridiculous. Um, because it, it it just reminded me of a childhood memory. Okay, so the bit after they escape where Jessica and Paul are in the, what was it called? The Thopter? Mm-hmm. Yep. Nice. Um, when they're in the Thopter <laughs> and he's like, oh no, the sandstorm, we're going to die. You know, it's going to rip us apart. Wait, what if I just become part of the sandstorm whatever yeah the way that the copter the thopter spins is pretty much exactly uh and very intelligent like whoever did the sfx for this bit like i love them amazing the way that it spins is the same way that a maple leaf uh, uh a maple yes. seed spins Oh, and uh, I grew up around maple trees. I'm Canadian. You know, obviously, like, maple is something that I care about. But also, like, <laughs> literally the maple trees in my backyard, I used to just, like, steal the copters and toss them up over and over and over again. Like, I was obsessed with them as yeah. a child. It's so that, that just, that, like, touched me in a place that I did not expect. That cool off-centered spin, and you know, where it looks yeah. like it's a little in slow motion at the wrong times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Very cool. Uh, yeah, I love that part as well for, like... Uh, like uh, Eastern philosophy, um, I forget what it's called, but like it's a thing that you're supposed to be doing in life. Like when the storm hits, uh, the more you try to stand and press against it, the more you break yourself apart. Mm-hmm. But if you like let yourself flow with it, mm-hmm. then it can take you to your next destination. So like him Appreciate doing you, that man. and like becoming part of the sand and storm, that like that was that was some good visual poetry right there. So yes, I was yes. quite happy with that part. I totally. Um, let's see. So Harkonnen comes from a Finnish word for bull. Huh. 
You guys know that? I did not. I did not know that, and I've oh. tried to learn a bit of Finnish. That's interesting. Yeah, so what's what's fun is, like, uh, that. so, like, when um, they're doing all this foreshadowing where, yeah, didn't Grandpa used to fight bulls? Yeah, he got his mm-hmm. ass kicked and died, too. <laughs> uh, uh, look I at the camera. Subtle. Actually, and then what's yeah, that? They're, they're, they're carrying but, that yeah, giant bull head around the... <laughs> I, and then, I, that does explain the bullhead, you know? I noticed yep. that decoration and I was like, they're making a point with that, but I don't know what that point is. Thank you. That's the, You're that's the information I was missing. Um. Then also what I love, it, it made me love my Zod action figure even more. <laughs> um. So like, I, I have these like three Superman action figures where they're wearing Kryptonian armor. And um, the, the first Superman one I have, uh, he's got this gold armor with the red cape and like blue chainmail underneath, and it's a direct homage to Jodorowsky's Dune uh, character from his designs. Hmm. And at first I got because I was like, "Why is this?" And then like I saw like the picture, I was like, "Holy shit! I have a Dune action figure! Yeah, nice. dog!" And um, yeah, then like uh, I watched the commentary where Zack Snyder's like, oh, yeah, I'm doing Jodorowsky all over the place here. I'm this, you, You're not imagining <laughs> things. That's excellent. So, yeah, the Zods are Harkonnens. And um, the armor my Zod action figure has, basically on the shoulders, has some pretty bull-like horns coming out of his shoulders. Cool. So, as of, all like, right. this movie, and now under, I now understand my action figure even more, and uh, I loved it that. That's fun. Dang. Dune is everywhere. <laughs> Thank you, Dune. For helping me love my figures. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Well, speaking it- of the Harkonnens, mm-hmm. um, how how do we feel about uh about the uh, the Harkonnen slime? You know Pretty I mean? cool. Um, the goop that he was, yeah, the goop he was, yeah, unsettling, sunk yeah. into. Yeah, I heard that he demanded. Demanded. I heard that he asked for more nude scenes. <laughs> Good. Like you do, I guess. I mean, huh. listen. Excellent work. I felt very unsettled. Just slightly horrified. Okay, very horrified. This yeah. Excellent work. Yeah, um, I nailed it. If he wanted oh. to be like disconcerting and just make everyone feel unsafe looking at him. Yeah. <laughs> like, well done. Another meme that they skipped is bring in Fade and Raban. Because there's and... no Fade. Yeah. So, yeah, which... they skipped Fade. I, I, think, but... I think they just assumed that no one can outsting Sting. And... I, I think... mean, that's accurate, though. <laughs> nah, I think what's going to happen is they, they want to um, build up uh, casting announcements for the next movie. Yeah. So, like, they have uh, Irulan and the Emperor and Fade, so... When they do announcements for like and like th- those are three key characters that like you should you gotta you gotta cast somebody very cool for each one of those. So I think they're just saving it for that. So hopefully next, uh, well you know if he he if he continues with his no Keith no memes no <laughs> <laughs> I will not get my bring in fade and Raban. Yeah. Um, no, but I thought um, uh, Batista did. It was Holy. great. Oh, so, you know, continuing the, the theme of menace and people without eyebrows and or, or hair at all. Like And the surprise that fantastic. Dave Batista is a really good actor. He is. He <laughs> he really is. I mean, um, I was reading a little bit about him just being really glad for the role to show off, you know, a little bit more of a, a deeper and a more, uh, more involved character than than uh than Drax, you know, which is fun. I think I think it's hard to not have fun being Drax, but But that's the thing with Drax. It's just yeah. fun, you know, like casual exactly. shenanigans. Have you guys seen um Denis Villeneuve's uh Blade Runner? Not yet. I that prior to seeing <laughs> Dune, <laughs> uh that was my favorite movie of the last ten years. Yeah, Dave Love Teaser, Blade uh like the first Android they kill in there. That's right, yeah. He is yeah. so fucking good. Like, it, yeah, to me, like, he, yeah, you're a professional wrestler, and he's like, no, man, I, I got chops. And he was he like, does. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna do the rock path. Thank yeah, you. exactly. Because remember when Scorpion King came out, we were like, there's no way the Rock's oh gonna be an actor. Here gosh. we are. 
Biggest star ever, ever. So Dave Batista just saw a path that had been forged, and he was like, "You know what? That looks fun. Let me let um, me take a look at that." He's Jessica's. Oh, uh, I don't, I don't know who the Jessica, the actress who plays Jessica is. But I love I feel her. Like I'm she's supposed to know her. who she is, but oh, she was God. she was great. I don't yeah. recognize her, but I don't know from where. What little she did do, every scene, she thunder crushed that shit. Yeah, uh, Rebecca Ferguson. Such intensity. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Please, cast her more things. Uh, there, there, she had this vulnerability that just, I loved. Um, like, uh, like I, I, I watched some review, whatever. The, 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 when, she, when she's outside the room where Paul's getting, like, the Gam Jabbar mm-hmm. test. Oh, yeah. And, like. Oh, my God, Yes. Watching yes, her yes, yes, struggle yes. through it and then find the strength to get through. I love that. It was, yeah, she Both is, uh, of them did so good in that scene. Mm-hmm. I loved. Yeah. Yeah. It was perfectly done. They really looked like they were in pain. Just like to be able to make your body tremble in a way that looks like it's trembling because you're in pain. Mm hmm. Harder than it looks. Delicious Harder. acting. Mm-hmm. Well done. Um, let's see what else. What else do I got? Ooh, I like the way they did the voice too. Yes, nice. with like a slight yeah, delay well that you hear, like you you get the like bass in your bones rattling version, and then like it's happened, and then you hear it for real, and you're like, oh, oh, I already did the thing. I I love how this story always keeps reminding me to question uh, authority, because uh, like every time I think about this story, I get mad at Jessica because uh, I'm like. Uh, like you know the baby jester right? like they've been playing a long time they and like holy shit jessica time. <laughs> you have one job and oh my god you you didn't get you gave you did gave him a son she's like but i really think like about the universe we'd be locked into if she didn't true like, she had one but, job and that job was yeah. not having a boy but she did it anyway because she loved her not husband the the so thing that much. comes to mind and, and like immediately when really I say it in my mind, I know I'm wrong. Is like, but the Bene Gesserit, they 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 have a lot of resources, and to me, they should be supremely smart, and we should do what they say. Like you know, they got a lot of information, and every time I say that, I can see the Bene Gesserit kind of like look between each other, like yeah, 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 do it. Yeah, correct. Says. Yeah, Keith. <laughs> you should do what we tell you. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, why do I feel like they're tricking me now? Then. Because, but, yeah. because you are being tricked. That's that's yeah. what they're spending their yep. entire. They literally trained the fremen to believe that a uh, a pale woman and son, strangers from the stars, would come. And uh, and uh, when uh, Jessica shows up with a boy, they're like, "Dang it, God, why, <laughs> Jessica?" Yeah. And she's like, "What? I'm strong enough. He probably <laughs> has enough powers. What?" And they're like, "Jessica, God, eight thousand years, you're please, in trouble. for the love of fucking yeah. God." That is something I love about the. Two more generations. <laughs> nope. I do love that about the Benny the Jesser at the <laughs> the missionary protectiva, like going out and just like seeding the cosmos with cheat codes for your own team. Like, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's some rad that's long brilliant. Game. Like, that's magnificent bastard stuff right there. It's so mm-hmm. good. yeah, it really is. Like, you want to talk about you want to talk about like big shadows behind the throne? Let's talk about the Benny Jesser because mm-hmm. ma'am. Yeah. At first, I yeah. say, but if they put this much work, they got to have some idea of what's going right, and maybe we should, okay, wait, no, there's something about them that nah. tells me, no, no, don't. Don't just listen to Don't ever authority. trust anyone ever. You know, I think, really, Dune is an excellent representation of don't trust anyone ever. Why are we on the <laughs> same planet? Well, because there was another, there was another, uh, I mean, anybody in power. Um, why are we on the same planet? Well, because there are our house and this other house, and... The, the emperor was like, the two of you have too much power, so I'm just going to make you infight. Yeah, one of you is probably going to die. Completely get wiped out. Yeah, perfect. So I want to say emperor. Fuck you. Um, so there's like, uh, they, they have like, was it the, the, um, the memory of every like woman throughout time or something like that? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. F- from so, their matrilinear line, and there you it, go. but then they share mem- memories, right? So, yeah. so then you, you know, then you get the memories of of that person. So, yeah. yeah. So, so in the later books, it's like they're saving saving memories, like you know, like mental hard drives. Is that a they pass lot them of forth. information. 
Uh-huh. And I know I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. But I'm like saying, that's a lot of information not to trust them. But then um, I could do my <laughs> late of the second, um, who would go, well, Keith, I have both lineages of male and female. Do I know everything, Keith? You've seen what I did to people. Right. <laughs> don't, don't <laughs> well, do, I'm, I'm trying, we're trying to teach you, don't trust. Like, I have no one knows everything. all of human knowledge here in front of me. Like, and, and as does like anyone with a computer, like eh, we still make a lot of bad yeah, decisions. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to say okay. that too. Like t- having a lot of information does not make us good at figure go. out which information is useful, which yep. information is good, or what to do with that information. Word. And I think that's the problem. The Bene Gesserit are spending all of their energy just being like, "Okay, we will absorb this so we can quietly mass power." Yeah, what are you doing? With <laughs> there you go. We're quietly massing it. <laughs> yeah, we know everything, and we <laughs> everything says we should run shit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. I have a question though, Jessica. Does what? Because we get two different reasons for her bearing the son. From Leto's perspective, she loves him so much that she gives him the son that he wants. Mm-hmm. From the Bene Gesserit's perspective, she believes so much in herself, and that she can be the fated mother that she decides to have a child, a, a boy for herself to be the one a generation early yeah um do we ever get her perspective can it be because both? Read the book? i i, yeah, I don't well, think, i mean she, i don't remember the she part does deeply love leto yeah uh, but... I, I think it's just love okay. not like um jessica's i should know smart... better than to try to think deeper into the female psyche as written by frank herbert of all people who <laughs> so. it's i mean you it's so funny because he's you know frank herbert dude in the 1960s and you, you can tell he is trying to re- write a feminist perspective, and yeah. has no idea how to what what that is. You I'm not going to say he has trying, no idea, but he's he, well, not you're right, succeeding. not no idea, but yeah. Okay, it, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I think I think he's got some success. So like, so like, um, Jessica's smart and as fuck. And the thing is, like, super smart. Um, she's smart enough to know that you don't want to be the center of that power. There you go. So. She did out of love and not to make uh, Quisas Hatterack, but she was like, I love <laughs> my, my husband here, and don't worry, everything will be fine. Oh, everything shit. Everything was and not fine. Yeah, yeah. But like, the, the smartest thing she does, spoiler, not really, not really. Is, is, is get the fuck out of Dodge when she finds out that her son is a Quisa. Like, the rest of the story, she yeah. like lives like her own happy life uh, on, like, a distant and planet. She, and, yeah. yeah, she's like, yeah, I'm not that. You, you don't want to be in the center of that shit. Cool. So, so my son is super out. powerful, and my daughter's like super, super powerful, and I'm just <laughs> an assassin. So I'm gonna just fuck off, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna y'all can deal with this. Peace out. Yeah, uh, yeah. She honestly, she, she my husband's out. dead. My not husband. Um, uh, my my Lido's dead. So peace. Adios. Yeah, I do wish that we had gotten more time with her training. Uh, training, Paul. I they. Same. In the movie, I think they did a little bit, and it was alright. But I well, there wasn't a I ton of like sword training either. Yeah, in, just, in the next I, movie, just enough. Yeah, in the next movie, that's when we get more. Jessica becomes the Bene Gesserit queen. Oh, with the weirding way, the yeah. Yep, yep. You're right. So, um, like, we're gonna get to see her train like armies of people in the martial arts of the Bene Gesserit. So we're yes. gonna get some. Yeah, she's yes. gonna be stepping up. So excited. Um, yeah, they kind of like showed the edge of that with the way that she like just beats that Fremen um, when he insults her or whatever. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. She's just like, like, aha, we will just, just take all of your Stilgar. water. And she's yeah. like, try it, bitch. Yep. Um, <laughs> and my friend who didn't know Dune when we left the theater was like, that guy was kind of weak though. Like that lady just beat him up, and I'm like, no, nope. you're interpreting that backwards. And, um, yeah, right. That's, and that's my problem level. with that scene. I, th- I think we don't get to see how dangerous jessica is yeah and and so i think your like uninitiated audience doesn't doesn't know so yeah, yeah they, they, they really think don't. oh yeah these fremen are just a bunch of a bunch of scrubs i i and, do feel like this dune made jessica look pretty weak um because like from the perspective of somebody who doesn't know what she's capable of mm-hmm. she teaches him the voice but when the bene Gesserit show up she looks like She's very much just like apologetic and deferential. Like, okay, yeah. Take Paul, do whatever. Like she's not yeah, supposed no, to be standing outside that door. She's thing. not supposed to be sharing his paint. But they don't know that. Some of them weren't even like. I'm sure some people didn't even realize that that's what she was doing. Although I right. felt like 
she did it well. Um, and uh, they, they showed Paul. Week. They showed the pain being a, like a little less horrible on Paul after she started helping him. So um, I have a note on her quote unquote weakness. I like it a lot uh, because to me, like. If you have weak characters who are able to overcome it, that means a lot to me. Mm. Like, like mm. seeing her being super vulnerable, but yeah. can always keep going. I it, it, the, it that there's message definitely means an a lot issue to me. with people also assuming that if you have strong feelings, it means you can't fight. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, they also showed her being being like sad about what was coming a lot, and my friend was like, "Oh, but she just spent the whole movie crying," and I'm like, y- "I I feel like." <laughs> Villeneuve was trying to communicate that she was, like, understanding what was coming. Yeah, if she's crying about it, there's some shit that's about to happen. Like, she knew the whole house was going to get wiped out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, So, um, so there's a scene. For somebody who doesn't understand what's inside her head or who who doesn't know, like, the lore as well as we do, it looks like she's just kind of, like, ambling through this movie. Yeah, I can see that. I can totally see that. Mm -hmm. Um... So, like, there's a scene that she's supposed to have where people think she's the traitor in the house, and yeah. she has a showdown with uh, the guy with the white eyes, and, with, like, he uh, starts Tuchir? talking smack yeah. to her about, like, yeah, I, I you know, and I'm... she I'm just min- wrecks him. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, like, he's like, I know you're the traitor, and, and like, let's have a talk. She's like, motherfucker, if I want to kill everybody in here, and I no one will be able to already. stop me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you know who I am? If I want you dead... Or my husband, or anybody, no one's stopping me. Yeah, that and, was great. Like, I, I don't think she literally said no one is safe from me, but pretty much demonstrates that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <'Cause laughs> demonstrates she have it. Have to say it. Yeah. No words necessary. Yeah, she's so, yeah, uh, that was well she, she's got some power levels underneath yeah, her. Yeah, so her. I hope we get to see that more in Dune too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and sp- speaking of Thufir, I one of the other things I've. I've I wanted to see more in the movie was more with the Mentats and why Mentats are important and yeah. needed. Um, you know, we got the quick eye flick from through fear, you know, where his eyes go white and, uh, you know, no, uh, no yeah, litany from a really uh, Piter about, about the juice of Sappho, which, you know, was added in, in Lynch's version, but was still fun. Um, it wasn't but, until like, I think Quinn's ideas that they need to do some world building to let people know why things are the way they are. Yes, yeah. Because otherwise, because right, I think you're yeah. you're an average, you know, just geek off the streets going in to see Dune because you've heard good things about it. You don't, I don't, I don't think your average person is noticing that there's not screens anywhere. You're not mm-hmm. noticing that there aren't computers. And we're um, also in like we've had a lot of bad science fiction lately where mm-hmm. they like you. I think like people almost assume too much how much well they probably just don't know or they probably just don't care or maybe there's no answer but like when sci-fi does a thing it has an answer that makes it so much better like yes mm-hmm. yeah like yeah like when so show that yeah like the 80s dune for the longest time like most of my life i didn't know why everything was the way it was until i found someone told me about the butler and jihad and like how they outlawed thinking machines and like mm-hmm. yeah like there's a reason why things look the way they do. And once you have that ground of like why this is happening, then you can get immersed in the world better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, and, and I hope that, oh, sorry, sorry boy, okay, go ahead. I was going to say it's too, it's too bad that uh, Melinda had to go because uh, uh, her spe- perspective would have been interesting on this, but I definitely think that uh, someone who's writing a sci-fi series like this uh, has a tendency to spend a lot more time on like minute world building than someone who's trying to do a film series. Hmm. Right. Yeah, I think uh, when you're doing a project like this, you really want to know the world, especially the, the way this, you know, the Dune universe is crafted. Like you, yeah, would understand it fully, and you know, there's a reason for all the, all the choices. <laughs> and you need to do a lot of like bigger world building if you're going to have groups like the the Bene Gesserit who have spent two thousand years specifically breeding <laughs> for something. With My name galaxy Jessica. I don't give designs. Fuck what yeah. And then Jessica, yeah, and then Jessica's like, want. screw that. I don't care about your three thousand years of whatever. They've I'm been building cards. Man of sun. <laughs> building cards on a table for three thousand eight hundred thousand years. Jessica's like. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oops. <laughs> oh, also I'm pregnant. Oops. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Walks out of the room just Oopsie. flipping everybody off backwards. <laughs> <laughs> she might secretly be my favorite Dune character, actually. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's pretty rad. Pretty great. She's pretty yeah. rad. I yeah. She always makes me cycle that question. How dear are you? Oh wait, if you're, you probably should have done that. Yeah. Okay. Never wait. All right. So way back at the beginning of this podcast, um, I said I was com- complimenting the sound editing. Yes. Um, yeah. I was in particularly the the scene that I love the most of this when they're like in that uh, sand coliseum or whatever. Um, and then the fighters in white show up and you see them like fall to the, or yeah. drift to the ground and it's like silent. So creepy. Was, was they just uh, like ghost in? Amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Sarda car. Yeah. And, and I, I will restrain myself so I don't yap too long about fight choreography. Oh no. On the contrary, but, please. Yes, <laughs> okay. indeed, dude. But the, the way they portrayed the difference in quality for the different troops where w- was so well done. And I think a lot of people wanted to see more, you know, to hype up the Sardaukar, but I think, you know, we got in the beginning that, you know, the Sardaukar, are like the emperor's most feared troops yep. and, uh, and, and the, they're only rivaled by, you know, by house of Trades. And, and so in the beginning of the, of the, the betrayal and the t- the t- attack on Arakeen, where where the Harkonnen uh, troops are attacking, uh, Gurney's troops, which are like just standard Atreides troops trained by Gurney Halleck, you know the great swordmaster, they just raffle stomp the uh, the Harkonnen standard troops. Oh, and then and then, and then the Harkonnen troops are supposed to be fairly tough, but the uh, Atreides just general general soldiers mop them up. And then later, you've got Harkonnen Marines attacking uh, attacking the castle against a group, uh, a mass group of uh, Atreides House Guards with uh, who, who display better tactics and are you know, the the they had spears and short swords, mm-hmm. and uh, and they're the Atreides troops again clean up on uh, on the Harkonnen Marines, but then. Be, Behind them come the Sardaukar, who demonstrate why they're superior and just like Dude. crush the you know, crush the Atreides, yeah. uh, you Did know, kind of elite s- troops right away. Well, w- yeah. while you are uh, bringing up the stage combat and how wonderful it is that the different troops had different levels of training and different also, styles and weapons, I'm sure you were about to bring it up. Yep mm, the uh, the way the Fremen fighting style is so utterly completely so good involved with the desert that they live in where they just like merged into the sand and they, they know how to use the environment mm. so well yeah and and uh and so then you see like okay the the fremen you know just regular fremen just hanging out you know in the siege are you know are able to put up a good fight against elite sardaukar uh drop troopers and just ambush and wreck them and mm-hmm. then and then later, you know, we we see why uh, um, uh, Duncan Idaho, uh, Jason Momoa is you know is the greatest fighter in the in the known universe and <laughs> <laughs> takes that, takes on the rest. But um, I just really appreciated the differentiated fighting styles and Absolutely. showing why the why the Atre- the emperor feared the Atreides, and then later why everyone you know. Everyone fears the Sardaukar. So we, I think there was some chatter online, uh, you know, how about people had wished that um, the Sardaukar were shown, like, wiping out troops around the galaxy to show why they're so scary. But I think we didn't need to see that. Like, these are the Emperor's elite, you know, that scene where they're ghosting in, the other scene where they're, you know, they mop the floor with uh, with Atreides uh, house guards. I think that was enough. And yeah. um, I, th- I just thought it was so well done. Honestly, Indeed. I think pulling out of just like the three houses they already like we saw the emperor and his troops like a couple of times that was already too much of like not being on arrakis like, yeah really if we start showing like every little thing like that you're just going to be here for four hours yeah but like that scene where they're anointing like the blood anointment of the sardaukar they remind me of hyperion on, 
Salusa Secundus with the you know the um, with with the kind of alien throat sing you know the the very very battle like, language haunting throat sing singing and you know there's those this sacrificial uh, you know those offerings you know uh, kind of spread eagle being loved bled. that and then shit. The, yep. oh my gosh yep. Horrifying. where you're like these guys are just Beautiful. like hardcore you know, fanatical, you know, like religiously devoted troops to the emperor. And then I think it was great that we didn't see the emperor. Like they don't, mm -hmm. they yes. didn't have to show the emperor. Don't want to see like this. Yeah. It's not who it's about. Not yet. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. And then, and then later, I'm so looking forward to getting to see that. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Cause like saving that for the next movie makes it a big deal. So yes. Yes, that was learn from the first Star Wars trilogy. You only need to see Darth Vader for eight minutes for him to be terrifying. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, let's see. One thing I don't, um, I, I kind of don't like Zendaya. Um, she currently at is in her career where Jason Momoa was at when I first saw him. Yeah. Um, so like Jason Momoa, Zendaya, uh, Tig Notaro, and Drew Barrymore. They all do this thing that I don't like, which is I can tell you're acting, you're not as good as everybody else around you, but I can tell you're a cool person that everybody wants to be around. And yeah, so with Jason Momoa, like um, for me, like I've seen him as called Drago and like in a couple other things, Conan, uh, I was like, oh, man, like you seem like really cool, but I, I, you're not, I don't buy your acting. And mm -hmm. I get that with Zendaya currently, and I, I hope that she has the same similar path where, like, um, Jason just kept on being himself, and it's now working. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's, um, he's the raddest dude in the in the world. So yeah, as of Aquaman and this, like, he's still doing his thing. He now melds better into worlds, but because he yeah honed harnessed who he is, now I'm like, all right, go do some more. But yeah, um, Zendaya in like Spider Man in this, she seems very cool and someone you want to be around. But I can tell she's acting. Mm. So, mm. um, she didn't have much to do in this one. Mm. Uh, no, no, I, she's on but, set for a week. Which I know somebody part, complained they were like, two, she has a ton to do. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, somebody was like. They acted like Zendaya was the main character, but then she was only in like five minutes, and I was like, she is, she is, just, just hold your horses, just, just wait. Yeah, she she builds up. She she's the straight up partner in the yeah. second movie. But movie. ooh, speaking of which, like the the hallucination that he has, where like you know he always just hallucinates her as like a beautiful ah uh, looking behind her. And then uh, once he like, spends more time <laughs> with it and pulls him, right? out and there's like the combat and she's smiling and there's blood all over her. And I was like, <laughs> yes. Who, who designed this scene? You did really well. Um, yeah. The visuals in this movie, stunning. So, um, yeah. So let's see. Normally, I, I, I don't like it when you have a one black character just to see him jobbed. Uh, and beat right, down. Of course. Um, but this worked. Uh, if there's Jamis. like a. Did they use the. Did they use the beam, meme line of. I was a friend of Jamis? Did they say that at all? No. God. I think we'll get that in the next one. They hate by Cause, me. Because we. They haven't. <laughs> they. They haven't gone to the. Uh, okay. The. You know, they haven't taken him to the. Uh, dang it. The, the place. Where they take his water. Yeah. See it. The, the place in the siege. Where uh, where they have the ceremony where they do the okay. friend of Jamis. and I'm very much looking forward to that. Me too. Because um, his we see his like that possible future. Yeah, his probability it, flashes of like the friendship they did have. That means mm -hmm. a lot now, and that he made a dark choice of taking him down to become the Kwisatz Haderach. Paul is now dead. Yeah, I, <laughs> I didn't. Oh, I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm a little put off by the choice where they made Jamis go berserk. Like I said, I don't remember that in the book. Where, like I remember Jamis getting frustrated and angry during the fight, but he like in in this movie he like went feral. Have, yeah. You know, as he get more frustrated with, with Paul, like barking mm -hmm. and screaming like a crazy person. And I was like, that's. 
I did interpret not, that not as great. Him trying to goad Paul, but I see where you're coming from, definitely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I think uh, you know made a knife chip and shatter. I I was happy to get that. That you know, there's some some good things we got. Um, um the death of kinds. They did that better than the book. Oh my gosh, that was I really liked that. I you mm-hmm. know same. Um, the black woman who beat the ground and let the the oh my god be- yes that was dope so was cool dope. Yeah, what, what although it, it's so funny like how long it takes for people to figure out she's a fremen like <laughs> glowing eyes I, I was like it's come on it's like it's like you really well, don't know the, the fremen like, I guess on, yeah apparently like Cl- Kynes original death was just to like be found laying in the sand dead no this was yeah. so cool so yes. cool loved, this was well done, loved yeah. it loved it worked better worked better I <laughs> I, my, my nose, I say, like, call a sandworm, but not for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I really liked how she went out. It, yeah, I in the book, I liked, I liked how Kynes, you know, kind of like, was like screaming in the desert, it, you know, but this was, this was more, uh, more of an honor to the character. And, uh, um, so I, I like the, you get to see more of Kynes' influence. And then as you, I'm not going to go into Spoilers there. It's, um, but yeah, Kynes yeah. is important and important for the like the the legacy oh, okay. uh, that happens, you know, like in later books too. I think you say it because like I don't. Do you think they'll get all? all do you think they're gonna keep going on these movies? Uh, I hope so. They might I don't just. Know. They might just do the the. Uh, I Zach hope we Cataract at least story. get Children of Dune. Yeah. I can I see them. I don't know that we're gonna get God Emperor. Yeah, yeah the, the Definitely God Emperor. Definitely not. The romance of the worm man? I want I the romance of the worm no. man. <laughs> no, there's, I don't there's think this so. guy on no. on uh, on Facebook in in the uh Dune Siege posting group mm-hmm. who does these amazing comics of uh of Duke Leto uh, of uh, God Emperor Leto the Second and Moneo and they're so funny and like worth worth the price of admission for being on Facebook just to read these like about once every I, week and a half. Yeah, link me yeah. when you see uh, those. No, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll link them to you. They're they're awesome. I'll um I'll send you a couple links and maybe you can post them up with the with the podcast hmm. notes. So they're podcast they're notes. very funny podcast notes. Indeed. Uh, let's see. Uh, Demi seems to have a thing for spiders so far. Um, he's now three for yeah, three. What was up with that? Uh, of spiders and his things. Yeah, um, Wait, I don't a, remember. Well, like, like the pff, in Arrival, the, the aliens are kind of human hybrid. got spider tendrils. Okay, yeah. And then there's a movie called uh, Enemy. Uh, it's a guy who's um, an adulterer, uh, and um, he keeps on seeing uh, visions of like these spiders. Like there's like this one that's like a giant, slowly creeping one over the city. And then the final shot yeah. is a giant one in the, his bedroom. But it's just, like, uh, supposed to be representative of his fears. But So it just seems like mm. two for two. And then, like, I gotta have my spider. So weird spider being that was probably a human being tortured by the shitty Harkonnens. That Wait, I totally forgot. Creepy. That was super creepy. Yeah, there was, like, this... I must this... have blocked it out. What? <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> like, on so. Giddy Prime... Uh, one of the Bane Jesserets rolls up on um Harkonnen, Duke Baron Harkonnen, and like there's this this, this spider mi- being thing that's like licking out of like a dish. Uh, and it was you yeah, know your was... typical Harkonnen horror. Yeah, yeah, and well, she's uh, like, "Tell the thing to get yeah. out of here," and he's like, "Ah, it doesn't understand English," and she uses the voice on it. He goes, "Get the <laughs> fuck out of here," and like it leaves. Yep, yep, yep. I remember now. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I think that was a tortured human. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I was. Yeah, I think that was an uh, an upgrade from the Harkonnen uh, milking mm-hmm. cats in in Lynch's version. <laughs> so that, I'll take it. That's Form. still just wh- why? What? What? Wh- why? Did you that? I don't. What, what series guy. of thoughts led to that to happen, and and why did no one stop anyone? <laughs> why did right. no one stop anyone? I want my safe cat. Can't have it. 
Okay, well, yes. So the Harkonnen made me feel gross and oily. And mm. uh, <laughs> oh my God, the Atreides house was so beautiful. Like, no wonder they were pissed to be kicked out. <laughs> you have to right. go to the desert planet now. Are you kidding Just me? Beautiful. This is my ancestral home. Look at it. Yeah. And yeah, we mentioned it already, but the ship coming out of the water so utterly like the opposite of uh, Arrakis. Yeah, that was phenomenal. Oh. That's another thing that I thought was really cool. The Ara- the city on Arrakis, the design for that was yeah. really well done. Oh, the like, brutalist it architecture. Like a city. Yeah. Um, it's like the in- the entire thing is close to the outside because the whole thing is uh, you're you're like refrigerating it in a way. Yeah, and um, it's made to withstand 500 mile an hour sandstorms. Yeah, so. I like the it's, it slow made sense. bombs. It was good. Slow the uh, the slow blade penetrates the shield. And they had, like, yes. bombs that slowed down. Oh, the, the way really that cool. they yeah. did the shield was such an upgrade from, uh... <laughs> I mean, like, yes. of course we have better tech now, but wow. Um, much cooler than, than, uh... The, uh I'm not, like, I won't boxy. say if it's cooler. I'm not saying it's cool. I, li- I love the boxy weird... <laughs> okay, it looks more smooth. You're right. Um, I do agree that the boxy one very much, like, didn't look like any technology that we have. So, that so cool. weird. And then they never use it ever again. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was gonna be the lightsaber really of well that, um, of that movie franchise, and they're like, "Nope, that was just that scene." Like, oh, okay. As as somebody who vastly prefers melee to ranged, uh, I do love the the conceit in in Dune where that you know where you have shields to explain why everyone still knows uh, and practices you know ancient weapon styles. Right. And, you you and have so to you know ancient weapon styles because awesome you can't shoot battles. at someone with those shields on. Right. You just can't you blow up the whole. The whole everything. Yeah. <laughs> you got to use the knife, man. It's the only way. Good old Holtzman shields. Let's see. So, um, yeah. So, uh, because like um, Dune is such an uh, a minimal elegy, a poem. It's <laughs> it, 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 it's there's not a lot of um, nooks and crannies to like. Oh, I don't know. I think we found a lot. But um, yeah, I'm running, I've run out of notes, and um, there were a couple. I just want to throw in. There's a couple things I I wish that we had gotten, um, and so I don't know if they were left out on the cutting floor. But there's um, the Benny Jesser Reverend Mother when Jessica is talking to her in the in the books. Uh, she's trying to see if there's any way to save Leto, and and uh, there's this line. Uh, Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Moheim says, for the father, nothing. Mm. And it's just so, like, chills me to the bone. And I just really love that phrasing. Mm-hmm. So I would have loved to, loved to have that in here, too. But um, that and the th- thing where I don't, I'm hoping that it's, it's it's revealed that Paul's a mentat as well in in part two. Because I I thought that came earlier in the in the story. It but, um, does, and they don't really talk at all about yeah, what a mentat even is. There's yeah. really like no mentat stuff really in this first. Yeah, row. and uh, but to me it's important that it's yeah uh, I understand that Paul is this like blending of he'll become this blending of disciplines where he has the Bene Gesserit, which is the more feminine, and and the mentat, which up until um, up until uh, Paul's time is more. Uh, more of a, the, I guess it's the distaff to, or I guess it's not distaff, but the yeah, the male version of uh, mm-hmm. um, yeah. of the powers, right? And right. Uh, and He's so him ultimate, having like, both is like you know, you know, lead hacks. <laughs> you know, where, where uh, the the supreme power of controlling other people's like emotions, but also like also a human calculator can do all the calculations and predictions, and yeah, so he. He has a, a tool for everything, and uh, yeah, makes they, it why Paul it would have so cool formidable. if we seen yeah. why a mintat is cool at all. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just like very vaguely mentioned as being necessary for space travel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, and, uh, and like the you know for the Harkonnens, uh, Peter de Vries is uh, you know I liked him when he was more of a force to be reckoned with. Here he's you can see he's dangerous briefly but he's he we only just get a very little bit of time with him on the on screen yeah i barely uh, could I tell that, that was him he's like the bald guy who's kind of just there yep. yeah he looks like he has like a black metal band and, and i have uh, a question got stuff to do mm-hmm. yeah was leto a mentat 
His daddy? No. He was just, Where did he uh, get it? No, from? but he uh it's train. So mm. he he decided that it would be good to have Paul um trained early on the as a man did so the training? What's it? Did Thufir do the training? Probably? Yeah, Thufir. Um so I if I remember right from the books, uh, Mentat training, you're trained subtly, mm-hmm. like before it's revealed that you're getting the training. Yep. So, like from early childhood, you're you know you're trained in in uh, deep logic and and calculation and and uh, and so it's just kind of something you hmm. all of a sudden realize. I as you're, like to think like, that into Jessica puberty. set that up. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. She's definitely that. in on that. She's like. I mean, he's going to have my powers. I'm going to teach him the voice. Why not? Come here, son. I have something new for you to learn. Yeah, I'll buy that. Nice. Um, I, I really do feel like Jessica has planned, considered and planned most of this out. Like, nothing that happens to Paul is an accident Yeah. by, by Jessica. And it makes perfect sense uh, for by her, her to designs. do that because, <laughs> you know, that's how her entire order behaves. Even right. if she if she would do something against their plan, it would not be because she's like, ha ha, whatever, fucking around. It's because she thought about it really hard. Just for the lulls. <laughs> and thought of a better plan. Mm-hmm. And, and also, she she loves her, her lover very much, and she wants to give him a, a son. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but while the son will exist, she will make him the best, the one there could ever be. The son is the son best ever. is relative. Yeah. Most powerful is probably what she was intending without thinking about the consequences. Nobody thinks about the consequences of someone having too much power. See, that's the problem. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah. you might say it's a theme. Max, what do you <laughs> want to see in the next movie? Oh, boy. Um, I'm. I've, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but I'm really looking forward to the Fremen being trained in the in the weirding way, mm-hmm. um, and and I really I'm like restraining myself on online talking to people about the movie because everyone's like, oh, it's a white savior story, or what, you know, <laughs> yada yada. And I'm like, no, it, Paul is Paul is a a, a terrible thing. It, like <laughs> it looks like a white savior story right now because people think yes, that the, the next arc of where is, we stop and it. then yeah. he becomes their Messiah and their Jesus, yeah. and everything is perfect. With, except, I mean, it, that's exactly the idea: is that people will think that that's what happens, and then surprise you guys. I'm not going to say more yeah. about it, but that's I want to say more. Happens. I want to say more it's, about it's the like burnt that, out eyeballs. You know, oh my god! Keep. Yeah, the sand burners there. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's this is like the they had us in the first half meme. Yes. And, <laughs> yes. They had so, us in the first half thinking that it was a white savior story, but surprise it's yeah. a people who try to be white savior suck story. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> kind of. Um yeah, um, so I'm I'm really looking forward to it. And um what else do I see? Um I I think Aaliyah is such a great Awful, terrifying, like awful, as in like like awe. Um, yeah, I want to see her uh, terrifying in the character. I'm really looking forward to how um, how Villeneuve uh, Villeneuve uh, nice. treats her and, and what they what they do. Um, and again, looking forward to seeing uh, seeing how they represent the emperor because everything that has been uh, of the empire so far has been really cool and, and a really interesting, unique design. So. That that big drop ship that the uh, the emperor's emissary came down to Caladan in, yeah. you know, was just like mm-hmm. so enormous and so different in like from any yeah, spaceship I've so seen. Different, like just the yeah. Jesuits like egg. Mm-hmm. Yep. Also yep. Really cool. So yeah, it's uh, it's, I I just I am so impressed by the thoughtfulness that was put into this. I can't wait to to see the completion of the this part of Dune. How about the two of you? Um, boy cat. Yeah, uh, this might be like the the uh, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. That is to Lord of the Rings. This might be to yep. Dune. You know, like I mean, That's I already had that compar- that that comparison in my head because I've been having that argument so many times with the the ending, and they're like, it should have ended earlier. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> the Fellowship of the Ring <laughs> ends when the Fellowship breaks up. It's not a satisfying end to an arc because that it's not hurt. the arc. The arc is three books. And the same thing, like, 
this is where this movie had to end because this is the switchover for Paul. The next movie is also about Paul, kind of. Yeah. But yes, in the same way, I'm very excited about um, more for Jessica in the like all of the skills that she has rather than like her emotional work in this movie was amazing. I so want to see more of what she can do. Mm-hmm. Um, they've done such a great job at everything feeling alien and distinct. So I'm really looking forward to um, seeing the inside of the Fremen society. And yeah. uh, same. Uh, I'm excited for scary toddler. <laughs> uh, could you imagine what she was like when she was like two or three, though? Because you know she was already like that. Yep, she's born like a, a conscious. screaming, a six-month-old baby just looking at you with the knowledge of a thousand years. Like, yeah, dog. Please get away from Ugh. me, child. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. thank you. It's um, my kind having, of weird. Having grown up in a rich tradition of scary children in fiction, yep. uh, this is like the pinnacle of it. It's- the pinnacle of it, absolutely. I. Uh, I'm super enjoying it. I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, mm-hmm. I hope that they keep just like knocking it out of the park with the cast. All right. Yeah. That, um, they've done a great yeah. job at casting. So, right, Keith, go ahead. Uh, what I want in the next one is I really want a really rad fade Rautha. I want, I want that guy to be really cool mm-hmm. when he gets a bunch of mm-hmm. screen. But the main thing I want to see is the storm Paul unleashes. Like, there's like this yeah. picture of him. Yes. Sitting on his throne, looking all grim and stuff, knowing that he unleashed like a, a billion deaths across the galaxy. I want to see it. I, I want to see that, like him sitting on his dark throne. And please give me a good shot of like ships and cities being ransacked across a galaxy. Like mm-hmm. I want to see that look awesome. Like that's what I want to experience. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, just like. The, the the look on his face, like was it due to him? Was he know what just happened? And I just want to experience the grandness of that destruction. Uh that's the main thing that I want to see. The tragedy yeah, I, of the destruction, right? Yeah, yeah. Like let me look at your face while you did this, man. You unleashed the storm and look at this and and the beautiful horror. I yeah. You had I, us in the I, first I, half. I wanna see right, exactly. And I wanna see Paul, um, seeing seeing the path that Leto the Second takes and flinching <laughs> away from it. Yep, yeah, that's what happens. Like, I, ew, I, like I want, ew, man, no. Right? Oh, I am not doing that. <laughs> Sorry, son. <laughs> it's too gross. <laughs> no um, child of mine. Yeah. Aha, too bad. I am a child of yours. Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> God. Whoops. Too much. Too much. Yeah, so... Yeah, and um, also, like, um, I, I want to see more of the universe, too. Like, please mm-hmm. show me the inside of a Highliner. Let me see what a Navigator looks like. Um, yeah, we didn't get to see Navigator. Uh, I'm kind of like, cool with them third doing that in, like, the third movie. Yeah. <laughs> I, right? I'm, I'm down with it. it. Which we're definitely going to get, right? Uh, <laughs> Considering, like, how uh, the the reception to the film, I think... The chances might be pretty. Has good. been surprisingly good. I was I was worried. I was I have not had a high estimation of film audiences in the last several years. Um, like, but it did all. I don't know if it hit hit at the right time, but it, yeah, it did all right well. money. And like, mm-hmm. I think that we're getting a a sequel because of my kind of like a shit. He spent that much money on it so far. Yeah, we gotta you know finish this. We can't don't stop. Don't say we've already, that. We've already put so no, much no, money. I, but I, I, you've got to take it in perspective right now. Everything's, like, every release is depressed right now. Mm-hmm. Like, Everything that's not different. You know, compared, compared on level, um, you know, it's making great money mm-hmm. for pre- pandemic money, right? It's, mm-hmm. We're still in a, a, a bad market for movies. I mean, like Belinda said, she didn't want to go see it in the movies because she's worried. And... Yeah, it makes I mean, perfect sense. People are eating popcorn next to you, you know, like even if they have yeah. their masks on, they're taking them off constantly. So it can yeah, be definitely. I, I saw it. I saw it at home too. Um, my, you know, I'm dying to see it in IMAX. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm dying my boys to see. Just got their first shot this yeah. week. So once once they're vaccinated, then then I'll take a little more chances out in public. Yeah, we we could not. We were like uh, IMAX. 
It, it was shot for IMAX. Let's just go see it in IMAX. Oh my gosh. I, I, I feel I've seen like hit the start of this story so many times. I'm like, I get it. I get it. I get it. Please oh. just show me like the step beyond like what we've always seen. Like we know that Paul uh, runs in a desert. We know that he meets a Fremen. Yeah. We know that he rides a worm and then takes down the guy. What? He rides a worm? Yeah, well, damn. <laughs> just give me worm sign the likes of God. I've, I think I've it's it's seen. probably just uh, out of the entirety of Dune, it's already like hard enough to c- compress into a visual medium. Mm-hmm. Um, it's mm-hmm. it's just easier to keep audiences if they keep it like the story of Paul. Yeah, but I see where you're coming from. Yeah, I want the yeah. It's give, so frustrating. A... You're like, I know why you're doing that, but could you not? <laughs> Give me a like, big budget Children of Dune. I just want to see what I haven't seen before. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Um, do we want to wrap up with some final, final thoughts? Um, hey, uh, go see it. If, you, if you're worried, you don't have to go to IMAX. But if you're not worried, it's fun in IMAX. Bring Max. some earplugs. Yeah. But go see it. <laughs> it's pretty freaking loud. Max? Yeah, I, I am really impressed by it. If you... If you just like artistry in film, Mm -hmm. it's worth seeing, even if you're not into sci-fi or not into like deep philosophical fiction, uh, it's still worth seeing it just for the beauty of it and and, uh, just the craft that's put into the sound and design. Let it Um, take you away. Yeah. You're really transported to a different universe. It's it's fantastic. I want to believe this is the first step on just completely Mm -hmm. unlocking and unleashing a, a torrent of science fiction movies. Um, like this is like the start, and then like I want this to call out other people. Like, can you do better? You step up. You step up. I want my Hyperions, which is supposed to be coming. I want yeah uh, the Sisterhood. Like they're supposed to be doing J- Bane Jesuit TV series. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, freaking. I want that. That's pretty fun. Fire I want me. my. I want Buck Rogers, <laughs> please, for love of God, give me a modern Buck Rogers. Just <laughs> so yeah. Um, this is a great first move. Uh, they no false steps here. Uh, that was a solid entry. So yeah, I hope this is the start of just like a new trend of like science fiction that maybe even competes against like the superhero genre. So Ooh. that we hate, we see them I going side by that. side, like who can do it better. So that would be quite the thing. Yeah. All right. Um. Do we do we want to cover anything else? I think that's everything. I'm good. Rock on. All right, Max, where can we find more of you on the internet? Um, I yap on Twitter a lot these days. Otherwise, I'm on Instagram. Uh, you can find me, Max Wellenstein, at, uh, on any of those platforms. Otherwise, uh, I do a lot of work behind the scenes on, on uh, making websites go better. Cool. Nice. All right. Wood Cat, where we can catch more of your stuff and junk. You can find me at Twitch and Twitter, uh, Voicat Gaming. Um, right now I'm not streaming, um, but you can join my Discord if you want. I have a link to it in my Twitch and my Twitter, uh-huh. um, to know when I'm starting up again in December. Um, and, and, and you also have, like, some really good Other Worlds, Outer Worlds videos on your Twitch. I watch them during work. Aww. You're fantastic. Thanks! Oh, um, I also DM'd a, a Star Trek uh like mini series that was six episodes long that saved on my twitch if you guys want to watch that it it's hilarious they, <laughs> that sounds they really very fun. much break the prime directive but it's cool. <laughs> as you do um That's right. as you do wouldn't be star trek otherwise <laughs> we talked about the prime there there's actually a bit um the the group is kind of like you know shenanigansy as happens with tabletop Mm-hmm. And um, I was playing the captain to like give them the missions. And th- there's a point where like I specifically I'm like, you are not allowed to do this. This very thing breaks the prime directive in a way that like you just it's specifically what the prime directive is for. One rule. Um, but uh, the the head of their group, the commander, he's actually an exchange officer. He's a Romulan exchange officer, and he's only there for like a small period of time. And it's actually the end of this thing. So he's like, hmm. Yeah, and then he breaks the rule. This is beautiful, beautiful <laughs> nice. character building. Good job, Devin. Take that under advisement. Making Romulans. Nice. Yeah. Uh, beautiful. All Watch right. That. 
Um, I think I, I post Where up some fun pictures on the Instagram. You can find me uh, slash Keith Justice on Instagram. And uh, you can find me at Keith Hayward on the Twitters. And you can find this podcast and more on popgeeks.com. Thank you guys for listening, yeah. and we're out of here. Thanks for hosting us, Pop Geeks. All right, this has been right super on. fun. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Right, thanks, guys. Woo, take it easy. Bye bye. We hope to be you back did. with the Stargate. Oh, yeah. Soon. We'll try. We'll do it. We'll do it. Yes. It's in the works. <laughs> as soon as I send everyone a schedule, it's fine. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Bye. Jack.